Hey everybody, Daniel here from Basement Tech. Hey, this is my NAD705 receiver. It's an oldie, but goodie, and it still sounds great. But uh, the other day, the um, display here, um, it's a digital display, uh, went dark. Now this has happened before, and what I know to do is that the in little incandescent lights on the back end of the display just burn out. So I'm going to replace that, and I'll show you how. I do have some LEDs and I'm going to try to put some really neat blue LEDs in there. Um, just because everybody who likes electronics likes to look around at things. This is the insides. Uh, i got the power supply on this end clearly. Power amp in the middle. That's the tuner on top. This is one of NAD's first uh, remotely controllable ones. Um, it, for the remote control part it had mixed reviews. For the audio quality it was pretty awesome. Just one thing to point out, and I'm not sure whether to be worried about it. I don't know if you can see it, but those, uh, those giant electrolytics right there in the power supply have a little bit of a crown. Eh, not going to worry about it for now, but maybe I should in the future. Okay, I don't know if you can quite make it out, but this little board up here holding this uh, now incandescent light is, is designed to be easily removed via those little tabs. The, the little black tab on top of sort of a white piece of plastic there so I just pop that open and um, lo and behold I see my last repair with that little incandescent bulb there and I'm reminded there used to be two of them and I guess I replaced it with one um, next is to remind myself what uh, what voltage um, this is running and whether it's AC or DC then I can appropriately utilize this little board to hold a couple cool LEDs all right, got the uh, trusty dusty fluke meter up there connected, making sure that I'm not shorting anything out here. I'll turn the power on and I just clip to the back of where that uh, incandescent bulb is. So let's um, let's press the power button here and check it out. And the meter says 15 volts DC. Now let's make sure that that's not some kind of AC biased up weird thing. So we'll just switch this to AC and say. Oh, actually, it's a really clean DC, almost no ripple, um, which would be indicated by the AC. So back to DC. So um, it's 15 volts, may be unregulated, but just needs to be in the ballpark. And then I'll adjust the resistor value on the LED, and uh, it'll be pretty cool. All right, always wanting to fill in a little bit of my thought process. Here is that little board. I removed it from the receiver at conveniently just unplugged. Before I did, I went back and made another measurement to note which is plus and which is minus. So since I'm using, going to use uh, LEDs, the um, polarity matters. Then the other thing is, as you guys know, the uh, LEDs, um, I'm going to use these. Uh, I bought at a ham fest. They're really bright for the amount of current. These are blue. And you can see by looking, for some reason they have two contacts per uh, polarity or per input. Um, that may be for heat sinking or just physical mounting or something. Anyway, they're connected together. And then with LEDs, the question is always what resistor value to use in series um, to limit the current going through it. Um, so did a little quick calculation. I'm sure those incandescent bulbs drew at least um, 10 milliamps, so I'm just gonna start there. Uh, 10 milliamps at 15 volts. Um, that's this little calculation up here it says that the resistance should be about one and a half K um, But you have to be concerned about power too when you start getting voltages, you know that are 12 or 15 or 20 So the power is just the voltage times the current here and um, that comes out to about 0.15 I always like uh, pretty decent design margins quarter watt resistors. That's 0.25 um, and that, in my mind, is just a little too close for comfort, given this will be a warm environment. So I'm going to see what I have in the junk box in terms of half watt, something close to one and a half K, and that's what I'll use. I am going to put two in, even though, as you saw, I had the last time decided to put only one, one bulb in there. All right, fun and games in the box of uh, resistors. Um, looking around for just anything that had a red stripe on it. So to get me in the ballpark, I only found this one here, which is what, 1.3, I think. So that's pretty close and that's half watts. So that would be ideal. I don't know if I can actually, let me see if I can. 
I don't know if I can light it up, but I did light it up um, using my handy dandy um, variable uh, power supply, voltage power supply up there, and it, it's a nice glow at about that. Now I did find these, which um, are 700 ohms, I think, uh, so a couple of those in series would do it. And uh, although future generations will look back and wonder why, I may just choose to do that. I got a little curious about why there were three wires running out to this little board. So I made one more measurement and realized that the designers had run both plus and minus 15 out to this um, board. I could take advantage of that since I want two LEDs and wire one to the plus and one to the minus. But I had to be careful uh, with the polarity of this uh, second LED. Note that minus is less than the ground, so the current's going to go in this direction, and I just had to wire that LED accordingly. And remember, the only reason there are two resistors in here is that that's what I had in my junk box. All right, well, here's the finished product. Looks great on this side. I'm going to flip it and prepare to be astounded. Yes, that's a ridiculous amount of uh, resistors for just a couple LEDs, but it's what I had in my junk box. So let's see, those are 680 each in series. So we're hitting at about, I don't know, a little less than 1.4K, which is, um, as you remember down here, we were aiming at 1.5K. Obviously power handling's not gonna be a problem. Those are each half watt. But it's what I had in my junk box. I sanded off the, the uh, coating so I could solder, and this is going to be pretty awesome. A blue glow. I'll show you the final product in a second. All right, there it is um, back in place. I put a little dab of silicone on each uh, silicone rubber on each end there and um, put a dot of super glue on those resistors just for good measure. And as promised, if I come around to the front and turn it on. Get the beautiful warm glow of blue lights, and now this is a one-of-a-kind NAD705 receiver. Thanks for playing along. As always, if you like the video, like it, and if you really like it and want to see other things like this, subscribe.